Good morning. This is Karen Rainford, Dr. K, and I just wanted to give you an overview of the framework for project management and how that framework affects the order in which we're going to study things in PRM 600. So here we go. I'm looking at um, table 3-1, and that's on page 61 or 62 of the PMBOK guide. And it's probably the most important page in the whole book because it gives you an overview of the entire project manage, project management um, knowledge areas, everything we do as project managers. So let me start out by saying, let's take an example. Let's say that we're going to be building a new garage, start to finish, and let's apply that example to this framework. Well, in the first place, we have um, chapters 1, 2, and 3 of the PMBOK guide. Now, these are the terminology, talking about the framework, and talking about the project environment. Depending on where we want to build this garage, which environment, um, which organization we work in, whether this is in Peru or whether it's in Minneapolis, it's going to be a completely different project environment. And so chapters 1, 2, and 3 of the PMBOK guide discuss that. They also give us some common terminology that we can use to describe projects. So let's look at our garage analogy here. First of all, um, there are, in formal project management, there are approximately 47 different processes that you will use during the course of building this garage. So, and it happens that the very first one of the 47 is developing a project charter. And if I go over here to the bottom, or to the last week of the project, it's closing out the project or phase. That means paying off the contractors and closing the project budget. So I know that a project such as doing a garage, is going to go through processes in roughly a left to right order. So the first um, process group is initiating the project, and that's getting permission and getting funding to go forward and build our garage. And during that time, we develop a charter which gives us the authority to build the garage, and we also identify who the stakeholders are, who's who in building this garage. The next thing that we would do is we would start to plan in detail how we start, we put together all different pieces of a project management plan. And we say in terms of scope, how big is the garage? How many windows will it have? And then we plan the schedule for it we'd figure out how much it will cost. We plan how we're going to make sure that it fits the needs of the project. Does the floor have to be heavy enough to support a Mack truck, or does it simply have to be a dirt floor? Um, we plan who's going to be involved, how they're all going to communicate, what might go wrong, and how we're going to deal with that. We talk about what needs to be purchased and how we're going to do that, and we figure out how we're going to um, deal with everybody who's involved in the project. So that's planning, and that is roughly half of the 47 processes that take place in a project. After we have a project plan, we actually go forward and we get permission to execute the project. Now, this is different from real life, where you figure out and you start doing things, and then you go back and you write down what you did. This is not like that. First, we plan it all out in enormous detail, we document it all, and then we start working the plan. And that's what executing is. It's directing and managing the project work to be what we just saw. And then performing quality assurance, acquiring a project team and managing them, managing how we communicate with each other, and then conducting, um, actually buying things 
and working with our stakeholders. As we go through and execute, we need to check and see, is the project going the way it's supposed to? And that's monitoring and controlling. And we say, um, did we build what we planned to build? If we didn't, how can we go back and fix that? Did we build it on time? Did we build it for the budget we thought we would? Does it meet the quality metrics? Um, did we talk to everybody? Does everybody know what they need to know when they need to know it? Or do we need to figure something else out? Did we buy what we wanted to? Did it cost what we thought it should? And are our stakeholders still all engaged? So finally, at the end of this time period, we have gotten our garage built, we check, and everything on our to-do list has been done, and so we can go into project closing. And to do that, we go to our funding source and say, it's done, please sign off on it, and then we say, um, we just paid off all of our vendors that we bought stuff from, and all of those contracts are closed. So that's how any given project works through these process groups. Initiating, planning, executing, monitoring and controlling, and finally closing. Now you say, okay, Dr. K, I get that a project goes through these five process groups, but why did you keep jumping up and down from one row to another? It's because the PMBOK guide organizes things by knowledge area so that everything you need to know about how the project manager integrates all of the other things together is in chapter four. That's the integration chapter. There's another knowledge area. There are actually 10 knowledge areas that are all one row per knowledge area. And one of them is about scope. How big is the project? What is in scope? And what is not part of the project? The next one is time. How long will it take to do the project? When will major milestones happen? And then we have cost, quality, human resources, communications, risk. Each one of these is a different chapter, chapter 4 through chapter 13 in the PMBOK guide. And you have to do each one of these, um, at least look at it and determine whether or not you should do it for every project that you do. So now you are asking, why do I care about all this? Because of the reading. When you read Sch Schwalbe, it is in column order. She starts out with um, talking about the project environment, and she goes in um, on each chapter. She is organized by process group. So she starts with initiating. She goes into um, planning and then executing, monitoring, and controlling, and closing. And that is actually the the way that the course also is organized. However, um, the PMBOK guide right here is organized. The first three chapters we said are kind of overview, but then in week three, we're just talking about initiating. Cool, because Schwalbe's chapter three um, is all about initiating. However, the PMBOK guide to figure out what's in initiating, you have to go over to the initiating column, which was right here, and you see how many processes are there. Well, it turns out there was one called Develop Project Charter in Chapter 4, and there was one called Identify Stakeholders, and that's in Chapter 13 in the PMBOK guide. There's nothing in the others, so you don't have to read anything else for them. Now let's look at week four. Chapter four in Schwalbe is all about some of the planning um, processes. And we've designated those as planning one or planning A. If you look at week four 
in um, the matrix, you'll see that it's all about planning. It's about planning integration, scope, time, and cost. However, it does not include these other planning items. Those are in week five. And then in week six, it's all about the executing processes, which are spread all over the PMBOK guide and all the different chapters, but are all in, in week six in Schwalbe, they are all in chapter six and seven. And then in um, week seven, you're reading monitoring and controlling, and in week eight, you're reading about closing. So as you can see, um, you have to jump around in the PMBOK guide. So here's the best tip. Read the Schwalbe assignments first. It's really helpful because Schwalbe is written to interpret the PMBOK guide. She takes what the PMBOK guide framework says, applies it to an example that goes all the way through the course, and all the way through her book, and then explains some of the more difficult concepts. However, the problem is that Schwalbe is really a secondary source. She did not make up the definition for a project charter. The PMBOK guide is the standard, it's, um, and that's where the real definition of what a project charter document is. So <clears throat> when you're doing citations, um, you use the PMBOK guide if you're looking at the definition or something of a term, or if you're looking for something about a framework. However, if you're talking about um, something Schwalbe said that wasn't in the PMBOK guide or some example that she used or thing that she'd said, then go ahead and use Schwalbe. But just remember, always use um, the PMBOK guide as the primary source. Schwalbe is kind of a secondary source. Um, some people do not read the entire PMBOK guide. It's really overwhelming. Um, that would not surprise me. But because it's so specific in terms of sections, it's very easy for you to find the right information in it. So, um, so by knowing which process it is that you're talking about, you can find exactly what you need in the PMBOK guide. That's it. Um, I hope that wasn't totally confusing. And let me know, and we'll move forward. Have a great week.